I think it, we're done with the news part. And it took me a lot of energy <laughs> to control myself to not talk about more combat brain training. You knew what I was going to say, oh, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you were using anticipation, weren't you? Anticipation, yes. All right, so let's turn the spotlight on our main man, John J. Kennedy, known, better known to his family as Jeff. <laughs> yes, yes. What's up, John? And my daughter, John, his dad. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and your, wait, daughter. your daughter's what? And, as my, and to my daughter, dad. Dad, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. That's the best one. So... Um, so yeah, so tell us, my man. So tell us. I got a sense that you know you were in the corporate world, wearing the suit and tie, doing your thing, and then in 2007, the story you were telling us earlier about your brother yeah. being a marine. Actually, he was an he was army soldier. Thank you, army soldier. But the marines are the ones who gave me the contract. Got it. He connected you with the marines, and there was this guy, this guy Doug Stone. The General Stone. Yep. General yep. Stone, who was like, "Yo, I, I believe in what you're what yep. you're telling me." Let's try this out. Yep. And then you begin to train the Marines. Yep. You do. And so I remember you telling me uh, it wasn't like you picked the top platoon. Yeah, no, we picked the In Iraq. I, and, and, it was you know, Iraq? It was actually, well, we, the training was here. So okay. they were going to Afghanistan in and Iraq. Those are two places. Where did going. you train? I trained them actually in Hawaii, which is the best ah. part of the deal. So ah, yeah. the only, only base they could find for me to do this was in Hawaii. Hawaii. And, and did actually, you move your family? Yeah, we moved there. Lived there for your, three your years. Awesome. Yeah, my daughter, my wife. How the hell did you get them to come back here? <laughs> Military funding got cut. That's It was, uh, it was not by choice. 2010, back. we can blame Barack Obama? Yeah, yeah, all that. Mil- <laughs> and Congress, they, they cut all that uh. stuff. But it was awesome. So, so um, you're in Hawaii. In Hawaii. How did um, you How did you do that? How did you start Well, this? so the base was, we lived right around the corner from the base. It was perfect. And so the goal was to try to experiment with different kinds of exercises. Mm. We didn't even know if it was going to work. Mm. Um, it was a big experiment. It was overseen by you know some psychologists from the Marine Corps. Um, this reminds me of my life. I still don't know if it's going to work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Right, Jeff? Yeah, I Do you wonder that sometimes? All, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> every all morning. The, yeah, every morning when I wake but up. But that's what makes it exciting, right? You got to yes. go for it. Does that make it exciting, John? I, sure. It Wouldn't it be boring if you just knew... Every day, what was going to happen? Yeah, just stability. Yeah. Yeah. Who, yeah. who wants stability? Yeah, yeah exactly. Wants right, stability. right, right. Yeah, I mean, you know, we got to be, you know, you can't be risk adverse. <laughs> right. Yeah. Life is boring. That's so like, you guys are like, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, that's like the worst thing. When I did my consulting, all those big companies, I, one of the things I decided I never wanted to be was I was working with all these guys, and you go to all these miles and miles of cubes, and this guy's sitting there. Oh, my God. And waiting for retirement. I'm oh. like... I can never live that way, uh, right? You got to get out and do things. I was I was on the J. Morgan trading floor, which is more exciting than those cubicles. Oh, yeah, it was but huge. after it's a decade of that, I'm like, I, I this this feels confining. I don't yeah. want to do this. And yeah. the, the excuse my language, pay was great. I feel like I can't swear in front of you, John. You're like, you're like this older gentleman who I have a lot of respect for. I feel like you're, you're going to flip a switch on us. Hey, remember. Who, John? Yeah, Go John's going to flip a switch hey. if we don't. What does that mean, flip a switch? It's when you uh, grab Does it a, kick our ass? Yeah, it's, it's a <laughs> type a of chair? kicking of ass. It's uh, when you snap off a pe- uh, the bow of a birch tree and then strike a kid with it. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. pretty... Yeah. Terrible. Flip is that Ohio? Switch. Yeah, that's well. I mean, <laughs> no my, wonder Ohio. That's knows. how my dad was raised. So <laughs> yeah. So remember, I met it with Marines, right? So yes. so there's nothing you can say. Ah, <laughs> that's right. That I've heard from the Marines. Perfect. Which was awesome. All right. So I forgot why I dropped the f bomb, but um, w- that's all right. So, so you're in the Marines. So you're, you're uh, well. I'm better with the Marines. So so we had experiments. So we had to have a. A test. Try through. different shit. That's what we were talking about. And I had to do one Throw stuff two. against the wall. And so platoon is about 40 guys. Platoon is 40 about guys. About 40 guys. And again, did you pick the best platoon, a medium I platoon? the worst. You took the worst platoon? Because I wanted, if I, if I could make any difference at all, I wanted to help these guys. I'm picturing a band of misfits, one guy peeing on himself. You tell the guy to do push-ups, he doesn't know how to do them. <laughs> no, that's stuff they could do, but they, they just had been through a lot. They lost 16 yeah. guys a cycle before from IEDs and helicopter crash. Wow. Um, okay, you know, so that's just, also... A lot of post-traumatic stress disorder. A lot of PTSD. Three guys that tried to commit suicide. Wow. It was just really, and they were just really morale- down they were really failing a lot of pre-deployment so wait they were just in iraq and they came back to hawaii is that correct during afghanistan they came afghanistan thank you and uh came back for two so the marines i mean back then that was during the surge remember the surge yes so the whole purpose of that was to get as many boots on the ground as possible so instead of shooting bad guys the goal was to protect the good guys to win hearts and minds 
which meant a lot more dangerous, a lot more guys over there. And so we were, mm. they, Marines were in seven month cycles. Mm. So they come back. Yeah, they were trying to like uh, embed themselves with the tribes and get on the good side of the tribes. And, yeah, and, and protect, bring people together, right? Yeah, and, and not, in, you know, in the old days, you go bust down doors on suspicion. They couldn't right. do that anymore, right? right? You had to protect So now they're people. in the field a lot more, and lot IEDs field, become a and much really bigger issue. short cycle, seven months. They had wow. to learn, you know, like, I think they told me it was like over 900 learning objectives in seven months they have to learn. And this is before they go to Afghanistan. Before they go. Seven yeah. months. And so... Okay, so they bring so you in. And these guys. And you're, they're bringing you in, and this is a platoon that has already been to Afghanistan, has yes. come back, and they may, yeah. go be, they may be going redeployed. They'll be going again, yeah. Shit. And, uh, and so the control group was just a randomly chosen normal you know, platoon, just normal guys. But these guys had been... Oh, you did? Up. Okay, so you're running an experiment. You experiment. did a control group of a neutral, neutral group. Right. And then you had your guys who were, who were down and out. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, and, I, and so the only way I thought I was going to get time with them, like in a classroom or something, the, guy, the kind of colonel says, there's no way. You're going to have to bed with these guys, Oh, which was cool for me, man. It was like being a Boy Scouts on steroids. I got yeah. to do everything they did, get into the ranges. Did they throw, like they, they put uh, fatigues on you and everything? No, not fatigues. I just wore, you know, contractor type clothes. But okay. um, I mean, they were the most, the one of the most wonderful guys. Hmm. Some of them are still close friends of mine, wow. you know, 12 years later. Um, I remember one night, um, I just had like, it was started raining and I didn't have anything to sleep under. And this one guy, Caleb Wells, who's now an actor. What's his name? Caleb Wells. Caleb Caleb, Wells. Who wanted to be, uh, he wanted to be commandant of the Marine Corps when I met with him, met him. He wanted to be what out of the Marine Corps? Commandant of the Marine Corps. Oh, commandant? Is that the top? That's the top. But now, now he's an actor. All I know is Commandant Lassard from Police Academy. Does that mean anything to you? Yeah, I remember that. (laughs) But now he's an actor in New York. Get out! He's been on some shows. He's a phenomenal guy. Go, Caleb. Shout out to Caleb Wells. Hey, Caleb Wells. Yeah, if you hear this, I have to send the link to this. But he goes, you know, John, there's a there's a drainage tunnel over there. If you want to go sleep under there, it'll be dry. And I thought, man, that was really cool. Right? So always looking after me. Yeah, that's cool. Um, That's so so it was just great bonding experience. But I had to do something. So. I had some guys helping me try to develop some exercises that we could use to train executive function. We didn't; they didn't know it at the time. Train what my executive goal function. Was for. Yeah, they don't know what they're doing. What you're doing. So there are a couple of psychologists. And again, just to, just to be clear, uh, you're training the executive function for the purpose of these Marines to have less casualties. Yes. You want them to be able to use their decision making skills in the moment. Yes. While they're in Afghanistan, going down an alley. And the, 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 the process of their brain happens so quickly that their executive function is able to process the right information and make a decision to, to prevent them from losing their life due to a booby trap or an IED. Yeah, absolutely. Got it. And, you know, if, if, if your listeners have ever read Malcolm Gladwell's book, Blink, he mm-hmm. calls that thin slicing. He calls that thin, thin slicing. slicing. Wait, define thin slicing. Thin slicing is what we're talking about, where you make a decision unconsciously. Um, the example uh, Glad- Gladwell gives in his book, one of them is a statue that all these experts say is genuine, and another expert walks in and immediately he knows it's fake. Damn. He, there's something he picks up about it, right? Break it down, think it through next to We talked about that earlier where he takes that information and executes on it. Right. So the Marines, so we developed these different exercises, and so we started with a lot of them. We actually tapered it down to just a couple of them where that would target that executive function piece. And so three months later, um, they were the best platoon in the battalion. 90 was days? The best, 90 days. The, the, the co- battalion commander said it was the best platoon he'd ever seen. They moved differently and better than any I've ever seen. They moved differently and better than ever. So just forget about IEDs for a second. You're saying their, their whole, the whole way they operated exactly, just got better. Exactly, because what we found is when you improve executive function, marksmanship, decision-making, Marksmanship even, is obviously when you're sniping and shooting. Yeah, I mean, Marines have to they have to pass a marksmanship test every year. Right. So marksmanship improved, um, decision making improved, decision making. physical ability improves. What happens is when your brain is more focused and you're reacting faster, you can lift more weight, you can you have more stamina, you're more focused. So the best. And then when they went to their final pre-deployment training back at Twenty Nine Palms in California. The instructor there said it was the best performance she'd ever seen. Get the F out of here. And at the IED specific course, this was pretty, so I, I'm telling the guys the whole time, a couple funny things happened, but one that was kind of cool was there was a very specific test of IED awareness, right? Can you find an IED? Mm. Well, these guys found it, followed the debt cord, and were arresting the trigger followed man. Followed the what cord? The debt cord, the cord from the that was going to blow up the uh, IED, detonation cord. Detonation cord, got it. And the instructor said, Guys, nobody ever gets that far. Go back to patrolling. So they totally aced that one. Um, 
their whole demeanor was much better, more relaxed. I remember one event. So, so the Marines do a phenomenal job of training Marines, right? So they have these simulated villages. and they. By have, the way, I'm sorry I'm so ignorant. How are the Marines different than the Army? Do you know? They're all good. Yeah, one of the things about the Marines, one, it's much smaller. And much smaller. Okay, so they're more specialized. They're more specialized, but but everybody, the training is longer. Um, they they're just more of a camaraderie just because you're smaller. Now, my brother's army. I love my brother, and he's been a great. He was a drill instructor. I told you this. Um, there's something about the Marines that's different. You look around when you walk around through the city, and you look at the stickers on the back of trucks. Okay, you're going to see ten times as many Marine stickers as you will any other armed forces. They're that they're, tight, even though, even though they're the smallest. Wow, they're the, that's right. I've seen Marines much more than Army. You're right, that's why. I mean, not Army's great. I mean, I love the Army. I'm actually doing some work with uh, the ROTC, Army ROTC at Loyola. Okay, um, it's just something different. Yeah, about, about the Marines. Them. Okay, so so John, what did you do in ninety days? To get these guys to kick some serious ass. Well, we do these different exercises that would help that force them to make decisions faster. So, and that was only the first, so that was actually nothing to what we came up with after that. So that was a real world performance. And it was cool because the, the you know, the, the one of the battalion commanders, because we also did the cognitive skills test before and after. And these guys scored significantly higher mm. than the control platoon. You, you plastically formed their brain to be more powerful. By the way, uh, to to the listeners, I de- John wonderfully invited me to do a demo ahead of time, and earlier today, a few hours ago, we did that demo, and uh, I noticed a serious, instantaneous, almost impact on my brain. I went to prayer right afterwards, and I'll tell you what, my prayers were seriously <laughs> being, it felt like way different, man. I was like super focused. And I was like checking out patterns. I was noticing things that I don't normally notice. My peripheral vision widened. Um, I, I would, yeah, the patterns was the big thing I was picking up. And I was doing anticipation. I had to call up my brother and I was listening way differently. Yeah. And answering way differently. Yeah. Had a big impact on me. So um, uh, the, this the, works. And the exercise that we did is a, has been improved tremendously from the first ones with the Marines. Mm. So what happened was after that, you know, we had to find a way to get this to more Marines. So we had to develop it, something to go in the classroom. And so uh, what I did was I took the, the primary exercises we used, condensed it, and made them harder, sooner, and faster. So, the, so one of the classes we worked with right away, um, it really at the request of the Marine Regimental um, Schoolhouse Commander, Major Matt Tracy, who's from this area, hmm. one of the smartest guys I've ever spent time with. He actually woo, woo, won Matt the, Tracy. Uh, Matt Tracy's awesome. And if he's listening to this, uh, he, he really helped launch the program into the mm. schoolhouse. Mm. He actually won the Marines um, Award for Leadership. You know, wow. only one every year. Wow. Um, uh, for what he did in Fallujah. But so we embedded, I embedded with a, with a class. And again, they couldn't make space for me, so we just white space. So if there was like a communications class that was supposed to take two you hours... In. They had an extra half hour, they throw me in there. Nice. So I work with them for about a week or two in the white space. And the Scout Sniper Program in Marine Corps is one of the, one of the toughest. Uh, Scout Sniper Scout Program. Scout Sniper. So what exactly is the that? normal sniper program, which is a sniping piece, the Marines had the scout part, which is a lot of stalking ah. um, and land nav and a lot of other things they have to learn. So the stalking piece is the toughest. So if you can imagine, you've seen uh, snipers, right? They veg up, they put all the be- kind of the veggie, like, grass all over their body right, the right. so, so they can blend in major camouflage so they major not camouflage. just fatigues but actual yeah so they kind of blend in well, foliage on their body so you blend in right? right but there's the danger to that too because if you're crawling through a different type of grass you're going to stick out hmm. so if you imagine you got to go from a thousand yards to within 200 yards of a trained observer with an eight power scope all without being seen then you have to get off two verified accurate shots so you take a shot and if the guy thinks he knows where you are, he calls a spotter over. They go to where he thinks you are, and they pace out three steps in each direction. And if you're in that circle, you're out. I'm not fully understanding this. So there's a dude who who needs to go from a thousand yards away from a target. Yes. He needs to get within two hundred yards of the target. Yes. Then, as he's crawling over there, he also needs to fire off two verified Once he shots. Once gets within two hundred yards, he's got to fire off two shots. And then when they're all done, if he hasn't been seen yet, they'll look through the scope and make sure he actually is on target and not just shooting at the ground. Uh, so okay. all that time, the there's, observer, there's an observer who's making sure that he's doing his job. Well, the observer's trying to find him. Oh, okay. With an A power scope. 
with an A A power? Train, yeah, an A power scope, and the guy's good, right? He's he's an instructor, so it's really really difficult. You know, what the the had the, the the sniper core there said that you know it's the it's the ultimate test mm. of mental endurance mm. because you're moving an inch at a time. You wow. have to co- totally conscious of your aware of your surroundings because, like I said, if you veg up with like darker color because that's where the grass starts, then you get into lighter color grass. You'll be seen. Right. If sun comes behind the out from behind the clouds, and you're so so uh, you make a noise. You make so really really tough. So wow. the typical dropout rate for that course is forty to sixty percent. Forty to sixty percent of 60%. people who go into that scout sniper course drop, drop out, out. Or, or don't make it. They get they get they get washed out. Oh, they get washed out because they're not. They're just not. They, not they, to they, say they, not they're, they're not really good fit. enough. No, they're they're phenomenal, but, but they, they just they can't pass the test. The 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 patience, the focus, the human. Um, uh, ability to just kind of like, you know, go stealth. Right. Just isn't strong enough for what they need in the field. They make one little mistake. Yeah. It and they, could be that they don't even play. Maybe the wind comes up. Right. And blows some grass the wrong way. Wow. Okay. So, so 46, so almost 50% finish and drop out. Got so, it. but with, with the two that we did the combat brain training with, although for the Marines it's called mental performance training. We uh-huh. call it combat brain training now. Um, only one drop from stalking. And the highest marksmanship scores um, for known and unknown distance. Wait, how, how many people did you train with this that went through so scout sniper? Courses, about thirty-five in each class. Okay. So I did two classes. Um, seventy people. So about seventy people into two passes, and only only one per class. So two people total dropped. Two out. of the seventy dropped out. Only two. You would have seven. expected thirty-five to forty to drop out. Right. Two dropped out. Yeah. That's wow. That's pretty powerful. And then we did a, a follow-on experiment with for just marksmanship, where I worked with the instructors. Marksmanship improved fourteen percent. Woo. Um, so then it kind of spread. So the um, the XO from that but first battalion took over um, a battalion of Marine Special Operations. So okay. Special Operations. Yep. Phenomenal results there. Trained Navy SEALs. Trained. You know, went on to pilots. It's, in fact, this program under mental performance training is the only program of its kind that's been approved by Special Operations Command. No other mental agility not like this. program no is mental in performance training. There's all kinds of the difference is as you experience. Most of the brain training programs are psychology based, right? Mental toughness, good stuff. But they deal with the mind. We're dealing with the brain, F- the more physical part We're of it. Physically changing the brain. What are other examples that deal with the mind? I mean, the first thing that came well, to me was. Like therapy. Well, therapy, yeah. Therapy, mental toughness. Um, you know, there's a lot. There's some folk, there's, there's some programs around attention and focus and mindfulness and meditation. Right. And they're all good stuff, but it's dealing with the mind. And we actually go deeper to make the brain physically change. Wow. Be faster, more focused. That's powerful. Okay. So, okay. So now, I, I mean, that's, this is powerful. So you then go from there to start saying, hey, can I apply this to other parts of life? Yes, right, right. And by necessity, because I would have been ha- perfectly happy to work with the military, but we had to come, military funding got cut, cut funding back. And started working with businesses. Um, really incredible stuff with businesses. In fact, one of my favorite stories is I, I worked with an a executive team of an insurance company here in Chicago. This is several years ago, Hub Insurance. I worked with the executive team Put them through a week, you know, a couple, of, probably about a total of about eight hours. This total. is CEO, CFO, CMO. Exactly. And they loved it. How many right? hours? Uh, about eight total. Total, okay. And then, but I always want people to use it, right? So I said, you know, start doing a few minutes of these before your meetings. Ah. So I got a call two weeks later from the HR director. She said, No, wait, wait, before you tell me, let's be clear. You walked in, you showed them how to do it maybe once took or them twice. Took you through what I took you through. Okay, once. But, well, no, cause, because you just saw the beginning of it. It gets harder and harder. Ah. Harder and harder. You walked them through the whole course. Yep. Oh, over a period of eight hours. About eight hours over a course of a week. A week. So okay, like two so hours a, couple a hours. day for four days. Perfect. And then you said, all right, I'm going to walk away, and you guys are going to continue to do these exercises on your own. Kind of like, okay, now I showed you how to uh, lift the weights. Yes. You're going to you go to the gym it. yourself. Yeah, right. Exactly. Okay. What happened? So two weeks later, I got a call from the HR director. She said, we just had our quarterly budget meeting. It normally lasts several hours. Everybody hates each other when they're done. What we found was we were done in 90 minutes, Woo! and they're all singing Kumbaya. She actually used that word. <laughs> so come back and train our sales and customer service teams, which I did. And it was interesting, the customer service, because we're trying to find metrics, right? I always find the metrics. Customer service. We thought that was happening because their brains are faster, that they would get more calls in in, the, in an hour, right? We found the exact opposite. 
So we asked him why. He said, well, I can resolve problems now in one call that used to take me three or four. Oh, so less calls are less coming calls, in. Less calls, but better status, customer satisfaction. Wow, the focus is and powerful. And then we spread, you know, the problem is, so, so I do a lot of speaking at conferences and so forth. And I might be speaking in the biggest conference, but someone in there has a kid in sports or someone with brain trauma <laughs> because what happened was we started working with guys coming back from the military with brain trauma. Mm. Or my all-time Physical favorite, brain trauma or PTSD? PTSD and traumatic brain injury. Okay. Really bad. So one of my favorite stories that really kind of helped me feel that I'm really doing something meaningful. I was in Quantico. I was training the Marine Corps rifle and pistol teams. Because what is, do you know what Quantico is, Dolder? Quantico? No. Have you heard of it before? No. I feel like I've heard of it, but I don't you know. You have, probably with the FBI, because the FBI headquarters is in Quantico Base. It's the Marine That's headquarters the name of base? base. It's in Virginia. Got it. And so it's their, it's their main base, is right? It, is, it, is, is also Quantico the name of a city? It's a, yeah, it's a town. In Virginia. It's a town, but it's kind of surrounded by the base. Got it. And the FBI has their place there as well. Wow, cool. Okay, so you went there? So there, but but that's where their national... Now you've seen some shit, John Kennedy. Oh, man, I've been so fortunate. Um, yeah. I actually, I High got, school in Japan. <laughs> side Hawaii, story. California. My whole life, I always want to sit in a tank. We're right? going to go to a side story? All right, yeah. but then we're going to get back to this other side story, right, which is Quantico. So Quantico. So, no, no, no. Go to the, the so tank. So anyway, so the Marines. I love the Marines. No, no, the tank. The, the tank. tank. The tank. Yeah, so my whole life... You know, let's I, talk I, about the tank. I, 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 I was a you know World War II history buff, right? Yeah. So tanks always... So I'm there, and there's a tank sitting there. And I said, man, I would love to... The guy goes, go ahead, get in there. Yeah. So I'm sitting there. I got a picture, sent it to my daughter, sitting in the tank, all the cool stuff. Tell me you fired it up and started driving it Didn't around. Didn't fire. I used the uh, the night vision, though, which was cool. Oh, yeah? The scope? The scope and the infrared. It's amazing what they can do with infrared now. Damn, so anyway, cool. so, so back to Quantico, right? So the so rifle and pistol Quantico. teams, right, of the Marines, they take marksmanship very seriously. So I'm working with them. Their the rifle and pistol better. teams, yeah. And, uh, man, John, you speak fast, man. I got to slow you, down, you, I know. No, I know. no, I can tell that your brain training is working on you, dude. <laughs> yeah. Right, dude? I just get right? excited about this stuff, man. It's just, this is, I, you get excited I get to and, this stuff. and your shit's firing like as no one's <laughs> like, damn. So I'll right, slow down. So I'm walking down the hallway. Oh, you can keep talking. I'm going to slow you down, though. Uh, okay, I'm walking down the hallway of the battalion headquarters there, and I see a guy, Gani Leo, Tom Leo. I trained him two years before. He goes, Mr. Kennedy, I got to tell you my story. You know, because he went through my training two years before. He said, they went to Afghanistan. They got blown up. I woke up in the hospital with severe traumatic he, he brain injury. He got blown up in Afghanistan. In Afghanistan. Wow. It's severe brain trauma. He said, my neuropsych score was only in 37, which what is What is really a neuropsych low. score? That's the, a measurement of your uh, brain processing ability. Okay. Thanks. And so, okay. um, and so only 37. And he said, thought, I'm never getting out of here. I'm going to be in the hospital for the rest of my life. Oh, no. But I had your exercise in my pocket. When I get got out of here. So they brought him to me. I started doing them every day in the hospital. On his own, he was doing your own. brain exercises. He said a month later, they retested me. My neuropsych score was a 97. The Whoa. doctors didn't believe it. What? They retested. And he said, now I'm the planning officer for a battalion. I'm a what? The planning officer for, for the a battalion. whole battalion. Wow. So His brain's working fine thinking, now. Yeah. And, and so that really obviously meant a lot to me. Yeah, that's very powerful. So since we've been reaching out, we've helped athletes with concussions. We help uh, kids with learning disabilities. Um, I mean, anybody with any type of brain trauma would just... Exp- I mean, we don't even know. It's, it's experimental, but well, the brain is so powerful. Yeah, it's it really is. Change. I mean, obviously, we're using only 10% of the brain, right? Well, that's not really... True. We really? actually are using all of it, but there's parts we use more than others, but it's always rewiring. Mm. So we would did with you today was physically rewiring your brain along the, the I you know, the, the areas critical to executive function. Now the cool thing is, and why it's good for people with brain trauma, is our brain will rewire around damage. So if someone has a concussion or CTE or or some physical issue in the brain, Get this, one of my daughter's friends, we were in Hawaii, a wonderful girl, had 14 non-cancerous brain tumors. Mm. So her IQ was about 70. She was really, really struggling. Um, and they weren't cancerous, but they were blocking the flow of the brain. So I worked with her for about a month, about a month, and then we had to leave. So I showed her mother how to do the exercises, and she said her recovery was amazing. Is that you right? Know, she's doing, getting A's in school again. Who is this else. guy? So you're amazing, John. <laughs> it's me. I didn't make the brain. I made the brain. I'm just trying Amen, to bro. figure out how to make it work, right? Amen. Yeah, I like that. And, you're uh, like his. Uh, you're his, you're his messenger. I'm his messenger. <laughs> yeah. Prophet John. Not the messenger, but I am one of a messenger. Amen, right, right, brother. Right. Um, okay, wait, wait. So uh, oh, I lost what I was going to talk to you about. Okay, wait. Yeah. So so there's something powerful here. You're talking about the the athletes. 
Yeah, and, athletes. And uh, I mean, and the athletes. I, I'm well, sorry, I lost my thought. I was well. Say, well, uh, we, before we talk about about the athletes, I love working with athletes because they they train their body. They're going to train their brain, right? It's a, they they get it. Um, so I work with several at Northwestern. Um, my all-time favorite. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, is the is Canadian quarterback Trevor Harris? I mentioned you earlier. The guy yes. is amazing. Trevor Harris is a is a Canadian CFL football quarterback. quarterback. Okay. Yeah. You worked with him directly. And I worked with him directly, and I think I I'll tell you the story. It's kind of a funny do, story. Do tell so us. two years ago, Dolder I started working with him. Have you heard of the CFL, Dolder? The CFL, the Canadian Football League. Yes. yes. Watch it sometimes. It's actually very exciting. It's, really? I, oh, I yeah. watched it when I was in Canada. I lived in Canada for two years oh, you in did? Toronto. Yeah, okay, my wife yeah. is Canadian. Oh, awesome. And I did watch it, and it, it was pretty good. I mean, they don't, they're not as, uh, what's the word? Uh, they're not as big. Uh, yeah, they're not as big, and they're not as, uh, like, they're not as, uh, ex- what's the word? Not extravagant, but they're not as, like... <laughs> wacky and, and crazy True. as the NFL. Well, they don't make know. as much money either. Definitely. I mean, you know, Austin Carr, who was a, a wide receiver at Northwestern, I worked with him uh, before his pro day and he signed with the Patriots and now he's playing with the Saints. Hmm. His starting salary as a rookie is much bigger than Trevor's, yeah. in the, who's one of the top quarterbacks in the CFL. <laughs> See. Right? So, but, so they play for love up in Canada, but I love the totally. game. It's fast. So work with who, Trevor. Who does he play for now? He plays for the Eskimos. Edmonton uh, Eskimos. Got it. He was with the Red Blacks at the time. <clears throat> I love how I say like I knew the Edmonton Eskimos. <laughs> you told me that earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Just and a you lucky remembered. guess. See? Yeah, you lucky remembered. guess. And you remembered. Yeah, I did. It worked. It worked, right? So the cool thing about Trevor is, so, so this, I've worked with him this year, and he's having a phenomenal season, right? Top of the league in stats. But he says, John, we're also leading the league in sacks allowed. I'm getting hammered every game. No, wait, 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 wait. Was he a kick-ass quarterback leading the league in data, in stats, before you worked with he him? He was a great quarterback. He wasn't as well as you would. I, I can't take all the credit, obviously. Trevor works harder than anybody I know. Sure. He's obviously doing all his physical stuff. He's practicing. The difference would be in something he told me, for example. He said, John... When that ball is snapped, I have 14 decisions to make wow. instantaneously. Totally. I can so see that's that. where I can help him, right? I mean, I certainly can't help him all the other wonderful things he does. Right. And so, so wait, so uh, was, he, was he top of the league or he was close to the top of the league before he started working with him? He was close. He just taken over and started quarterback with the Red Blacks. He actually taken over the year before when they went through the through the uh, oh. uh, the Grey Cup. Okay. So he started quarterback with the Red Blacks. Great quarterback. And you started working with him right when he became the starter. I started working with him that year. Yeah. Oh, so he didn't really have too many stats. To well, be he did. I mean, he's been he's been there for a while. He okay. Kind of up and down. He had some trouble finishing the se- the seasons. Okay. And so that's kind of uh, a big deal. So he wasn't necessarily the best. So you took a guy who's maybe middle of the road, maybe a little bit better than middle of the road. Is that sound, is that fair? Uh, no, I, I mean I I love the guy. I mean he he's he is the hardest working guy I know. I think I'm, I I'm think talking it statist- I'm only talking statistically. Yeah, statistically, he was probably. Maybe second in the league at the time. I okay. think Jeremiah M- Masoli, I think, might have been at the top. I'm not sure. All right. Um, All right CFL expert. Got it. <laughs> I'm not. I, you know, I, but the problem is, you know, I, your clients. So many athletes. I can't, like, you know, I, I can't follow all the teams all the yeah, time. Yeah, but yeah, I always follow hard. Trevor. Um, the cool thing about Trevor, so so they were leading the, the, the league in sacks allowed. So, so as you work with him, he then moves to becoming the number one quarterback. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, and I, I presume partly due to the work you do with him. And then he comes to you and says, hey, thanks for helping me out be the best quarterback there is. He then says to you, I'm well, getting sacked too much? Yeah, getting sacked too much. So they're leading the league in sacks allowed. He said, you know, John, you got to protect your quarterback. So I donated an hour of brain training via Zoom to the offensive line. <laughs> no sacks for the next three games. <laughs> no sacks for the next three games. Wow. So the team, last year, the Red Blacks brought me up and I worked with the whole team. And they, they made all the way to the Great Cup. Wow. So again, I can't take all the credit, but I assume but the I Great Cup the Great Cup is, is the Super Bowl. NFL Championship. Yeah, Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Yeah. And then this year he moved to the uh Eskimos. But now and I don't know if I, I mentioned, but I, I was checking his stats and he's still I think he has the most or very slightly second place in yardage this year for CFL quarterbacks. And he's missed the last three games he's with an still, arm injury. Oh, and, and he's, he's still up there. Wow, he's doing pretty good. But he's an awesome guy. When he comes back, he's just going to kick butt. Do you still work with these guys on an ongoing basis, or do you just need the first six, eight hours of them? Yeah, it's, it's pretty much on and off, right? So Trevor is more than anyone else I've ever worked with. He has really pushed himself. So you know, I'm always coming up with new variations that work different parts of the brain. Trevor does that himself. 
So when we do get together, like we'll, the we'll, student becomes the master. He, he does. We'll FaceTime every once in a while. So he's helped me a lot with football players because wow. he's developed exercise specifically with football. Yeah. And he's always trying to find harder ways to do things. And so we, he's yeah, really challenging his brain. Yeah. Yeah. I learned from him. Amazing. So and he's, that's like he's Mr. Miyagi second. learning from the Karate Kid. Yeah. That's never going to happen. <laughs> Well, you know, what's cool is that speed drill we did. Uh, what was your final time? I think it was 105. So, no, one thir- so there's 113, right. and then there was uh, 52 or something like that. Yeah. 20 seconds I shaved off. Then with the hand, it was uh, 105. And that includes notifications popping up on my computer. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, that speed drill, we kind of use the gauge of processing speed. So Trevor's the second fastest of any of our work with. What's he's, his speed? He's at about 18, 19 seconds. Wait, wait, wait. With which exercise? The one you did. Only no. The speed drill with alternate tapping. Get out of here. Yeah. yeah I feel like fast. such a, man. Well, but you'll my get My penis just practice. shrunk like by six inches. <laughs> but the fast, so that's the second fastest, right? The fastest is my daughter. No. She's been doing this for 12 years, right? Since she's my guinea pig when I started, she wow. can do that in about 12 seconds. No It's way. so fast because then you're, you're, you're seeing like three rows ahead. It really improves that anticipation we Amazing. talked about, right? And it impacts the vision too. Because she's seen three rows ahead. Oh, yeah, exactly. So Trevor, I love working with Trevor. Okay. All right. uh, You know what? Let's take a moment right now. Sure. And let's just do uh, one of the exercises. Sure. Sure. All right. Okay. Do you you need something in front of you? No, I'm good. You You, can see that. You're good? Yeah. All right. And do we we need to time it or anything? Do you want me to time you on a speed drill? You want to see if you get 12 seconds? Sure. (laughs) So let's explain, right? So the whole purpose of the program is executive function, which is making decisions. Making decisions. So we start with a sheet that has symbols on it that require a decision. In this case, we're going to use some arrows to take yeah. different directions. Let's show this to the cameras who, for the YouTubers. All right. I, this is a page. At the top of this page, it says mental agility training, trademark, fast, <laughs> focused, flow state. Yeah, so this, I did feel me getting into the flow state. Yeah. Exactly. And there's, there's uh, arrows pointing all different directions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns and about 15 or 16, 16 down, rows. Uh-huh. 16 rows down, eight columns across, four different colors. So not only the arrows pointing different directions, there's blue, green, red, yellow. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm looking at, listeners. All right, and I'm going to... You're going to repeat off the directions on the whole page, like you're reading a book, left, right, left, right, while you're alternate tapping your hands. So this engages all parts of your brain, eyes, ears, mouth, proprioceptive part of motion, and your memory... And both hemispheres of your brain. So we're stimulating your entire brain at the same time. That's and then, robust stimulation. After I do this, I will be able to float off of this chair, right? <laughs> yes. And I'll time you. Let's see how you do. And I can just begin whenever? Yeah, go begin whenever. And then I, I, when I begin, I'm not going to begin yet, but when I begin, I'm going to say, uh, at the same time, I'm going to say right and then hit my right leg or something? Or, well, you're going to hit, you're going to alternate tap. That's why it's alternate. hard. It's got to be alternate. think about your hands, right? Got it. We want two different zombie systems. Okay, got it. And we'll talk about zombie systems later. All right, so I'm going to... All right, so right, left, down, blue, up, start over. So so speed will just only directions. Only directions. Only directions. Got it. And faster, because you can can do faster than that. You're right, you're right. As fast as you can. All right, so right, left, down, up, up, right, up, right, down, right, up, down, left, left, down, left, down, left, down, right, down, up, right, down, right, up, left, 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 down, down, right, left, up, up, right, 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 down, left, up, left, down, left, right, left, up, down, up, right, up, right, up, right, right, left, up, down, left, up, left, down, left, down, down, up, right, left, up, right, up, right, right, left, down, up, left, left, down, left, down, right, up, down. Down, up, right, down, down, left, down, right, right, left, right, down, down, right, right, up, left, left, right, right, down, left, left, up, up, right, left, up, right, up, up, left, down, up, up, left, down, left, up, right, up, right, right, down, up, right, left, left, uh, down, left, down. Okay, good. Now you, I struggled there. Yeah, your listeners are going to be dizzy, you know, listening to all that. <laughs> yeah. But a minute three seconds. I hope seconds. you're not driving, people. That's faster than you did before. A minute three, yeah, it was a minute three seconds. It was faster. 
Wow, I felt I was stumbling through that. Yeah, well, I think because I'm performing, or this is you know the tapes are going. Maybe I think I had some anxiety there. Yeah, but here's the key, right? We talked about this. So, so when you are get in flow state, you just go through those arrows without even thinking about it. Right? I felt my I could feel the could thinking feel going that, right? on. Yeah, I could. I, it was almost like I was hearing a voice saying, "Don't screw up. Everyone's watching. Don't screw up. Everyone's watching. <laughs> really? Don't screw, yeah." Interesting, but nobody else has right? them, so they don't know if you're messing them up. I know they're not, they're not, I can make yeah. them. I can fucking make you're them. You're gonna up. make them up. You're <laughs> gonna make them up. Up, down, left, right, down, down, up, right. Blah, 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 blah. That's right. That's right. Wow. So yeah, and I, there were there were moments in the middle where I started feeling myself flow. Yeah. Where yes. I'm like, oh wait, the voice is gone. Yeah. And it's just about the directions. Yep. And then I was only for three or four rows, and then it kind of came back. Your conscious starts to reinsert itself. Yeah, the conscious yeah. starts to play right. play games with me, and then it came back after three or four rows. And then I got it again. I started wrestling it yeah, down. Right. And in the end, I really had it. Yeah. And then with the last three, it came right back. Yeah, right. The last right. three arrows. I'm like, what, what is wrong with you, you know? And the cool thing about this is we are training your brain to do amazing things, but you're not aware of it, right? So your brain, in order to do that, it has to be focused. It has to push things into the unconscious, right? It has to tune everything out. And I don't tell you to do that, right? You're just, your brain is doing it to get the reward of saying the arrow. Mm. And so I mentioned about flow states. So one of our neuroscientists, as I mentioned before, we're actually optimizing system one, which is fast and unconscious, and system two, slow and conscious thinking. These are, these are brain systems? These are, a, a Daniel Kahneman uh, wrote a book called Thinking Fast and Slow, and he talks about system one and system two. Now, we actually go beyond what he was talking about, mm -hmm. but that's Let's kind start of the with model. Those. System one and system two, you're saying, hey, there's one system that is, what is it? Uh, is, is fast and unconscious. Where your brain operates in a fast way and in an unconscious way. Yes. That's system one. And what's system two? Slow and conscious. Where your brain operates in a slow way and a conscious way. That kind of makes sense. Right. And what we're trying to do is create, is make no, is system two become system one. Yes. We're trying to make system two become system one. This reminds me when I was first starting out in comedy and I was training improv and other stuff. Yeah. It was like they have to teach us and explain how things work. And so you're stumbling and fumbling and going slow and you're trying to think about it and they're like, no, no, don't think, be in the moment. And I'm like, I got to think about what you just taught right, me. Right. And they're like, try not to. And so eventually over time, the goal is for slow and conscious to become fast and unconscious, right, which is right. the way you talk. Fast <laughs> and unconscious. <laughs> yeah, I talk. Too fast. Too fast. But along the way, so, you know, during the training, as you remember, we tried to target those different parts of executive function. Which different parts? Tell me. Well, first... Um, I could see focus, wherever well, part of the brain anticipation that is. Anticipation is huge. Anticipation is huge. So, like, Rain Gretzky says, I can, I'm so great because I can see the puck where it's going to go. Where it's going. He's anticipating where the puck anticipating is going to go. Anticipating where it's going to go. That's and a quote so from Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, we were, in the beginning... Um, we use two different parts of your brain, color and fruit. Uh, color, I'm sorry, Hold color on. and Do you know who Wayne Gretzky is? No. He's one of the greatest hockey, hockey players, players ever. ever. Yeah, He's really. like the Michael Jordan of hockey, right? Yeah. Exactly. Los Angeles Kings and then yeah. Anaheim Ducks? I think so. I think so. And he okay. might have even been on an East Coast team. Yeah. yeah. Are you a big hockey guy? No, not at all. <laughs> Columbus Yellow Jackets, no, I want to say, or something? The Columbus Clippers. Clippers? Yeah. Oh, man. After the Los Angeles Clippers, no, how could they name No, the yeah. Columbus Blue, Blue Jackets. I Blue was thinking... Jackets, right. The Clippers is our the minor league team oh, geez. for baseball. So I'm surprised you know that. Yeah, I think it's because I went to one. I got a one of those mini ah, bats. Yeah, yeah. When so I was a you, kid, you're from Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, oh, okay. Columbus, Ohio. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Trevor's from Ohio. Tre oh, Trevor, the football player. Yeah. Oh, he's American. Yeah, he's American. Interesting. He's CFL. CFL. Yeah. All right. So, uh, uh, what function were we talking about there? So anticipation, anticipation and which is Gretzky. really important, right? So, if you could, especially huge for athletes, but traders, you know, when I work with traders, they've got to anticipate price movement right. before it happens, right? right? And then be able to make the decision unconsciously without getting stressed, right? So, when you can anticipate something, you're that much ahead of your competition. For a second, going back to the Marines. Um, did you have data showing that there were indeed less casualties with certain platoons? No, because we just, what we know is because they performed, but they all came back. They all came back. Um, they all made it back alive. They all made it back. Which Two was guys, very different than how their platoon was the first time. The first, uh, yes. what's it called? The first. Uh, Two guys did get blown up, but they survived. Um, wow. but we talked about that a lot. Part of the problem. Do you with think first one, them not, do you think them surviving had something to do possibly with how their brain functioned? Maybe, but, but part of the problem is we had no follow on back then. So they went through the training, they got improved, but we didn't have 
the way to get them to continue to practice. Now, oh. what's interesting is the scout snipers, because they take things so serious. I remember I had to leave the island for a couple of weeks, and I told them- This you know, is the 70 dudes, only one or two dropped out. Yeah. And actually, the guy who had got the highest marksmanship and stalking scores was the youngest. He was the only private that they ever let in because it's so hard to get in there. He practiced the hardest because he had something to prove. And he won all the awards. Wow. But he, he practiced probably 10 times as much as anybody else while I was gone. There was mm. two weeks to do and they had a place to check it off. Mm. So one of the things we do now is you want to implement that follow-on process. So even for businesses now, I do the workshop, but then I give them like weekly assignments and you know, monthly um, like mastermind groups to support them over the time because it takes a while to become a habit. Right. You know, zombie system. And so once that becomes part of their you know routine, so the trader I work with in England, right? So he starts his trading routine every day with going through some of the exercises. What I just did. What you just He'll spend did twenty and, minutes and some doing other that? variations because we get them harder, but sure. different ones. How long will he do that every day? He'll probably do that for 10 minutes before he starts. 10 minutes before because he starts. Because the key training. is if you struggle with the exercise, you're going to struggle trading. Right? Or if you struggle with the exercise, you're going to struggle on the field. That, wow. That's powerful because as I struggled with the arrows, you know, um, I feel like it impacts how I'm uh, on this podcast. If you, yeah. It impacts how I am on this podcast. Yeah. And so it was a sign to me that I'm probably not 100% comfortable in this seat right now as we as I'm performing, as I'm doing this podcast. Okay. Um, and so you're saying, hey, that's a sign for you yourself as you're going through yeah. the exercise armor. That's a sign for you to know uh, uh, something may be afoot emotionally. Something may be cooking inside me emotionally. And a second round or a third round, I may be able to calm whatever might be cooking inside right, me. Right, right. Well, and that's why I think this would be so powerful when you do your improv, right? Because if you're thinking about the crowd or worrying about what you're going to say – then your mind's all over the place. Yes. And so if you run through this speed drill before you get out there and you're having trouble, like your conscious keeps keeps interjecting, you're not ready. Correct. Do it again, and maybe even a third time until right. you get this fast and flow state, then you're ready for whatever else is coming. And and would we expect that the brain and its plasticity would hang on to that third exercise in a way where I can just go on stage minutes later or right, an hour, half an hour, hour Yeah, later. you're in that flow state, right? You're, you're thinking without thinking. Is there a big time factor here? Like like here, like in, I have a show this Sunday. For those listening, come to the Comedy Clubhouse, 8 p.m. Comedy Clubhouse. I have a show there, improv. Um, but, oh wait, this is released on Monday, so ignore what I just <laughs> said, people. <laughs> Two Sundays from, let's see, what is this Sunday? It's uh, 12, 13. If you're listening to the pirated version of this show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, That's right. If you the, are the editor. The tw- my next show is the 27th, guys, so if you want to see me on the 27th using these brain techniques. Cool. Um, so on the 27th, I have a show. The, we have to sit and watch two openers, and then we go up. Okay. We're the, we're the main event. So 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So 50 minutes goes by while I'm sitting watching them, and then I go up. Okay. Is there a time factor here in the event I can't do it for 50 minutes, or should I try and sneak away 10 minutes ahead of time? Um, either. You have to experiment and see what's best for yourself. I know. I think I told you when I'm working with the golf team, what they'll do is if they have a bad hole. Which golf team? The Evanston High School. Golf okay. Team. What they'll do is... Hey, didn't you tell me about something about Wisconsin too, the University of yeah, Wisconsin? Yeah, the Wisconsin Badgers, hockey team. Hockey team, okay. So the hockey team. Got it. So go. So the Evanston High School or the so, Badgers... So they want to do this like in halftime. So if you if you if something bad happens, right, you, you don't want to be thinking about it, especially for golfers. If you have a bad hole, the last thing you want to do is think about what happened. And hear that voice that says you suck. Right. You suck. So you pull out the arrows, you get in flow state, and you're ready for the next hole. Wow. Same thing with a hockey. They would do it in between holes. In between holes. If they and hockey, they do it in between fights. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully they'll make them better fighters, right? I mean, yeah. You know, they look Focus. Quicker. Knock out his effing teeth. I work with MMA guys, right? So, do you really? Yeah. So, oh, no shit. So, uh, MMA guy. Who haven't you worked with, dude? You were telling me a cool story about um, a former Bulls player, right? Um, well, Kyle Korver, years Kyle ago, Korver, years right. ago, one of my first athletes I worked with, okay. I got connected him through his nutritionist. The cool thing was his wife, Juliet. So this is before they were married. This is when Kyle was Did you not, hook them up, by the way? Uh, no, I, okay. I can't take that credit. This is before Kyle was the, the big three-point shooting star, right? So he, right. he was playing for the Bulls. First season, I worked with him during the All-Star game because he wasn't in the three-point con- uh, contest. And he had he better, was or was not? He was not that year, okay. so I worked with him during that break. 
his his stats for the second half were better than his stats for the first half, his shooting stats. Get out. And his wife, Juliet, who did it with him, she sent me an email like a week later and said she wrote seven songs the day after the brain training. Wow. Because she was just She's a, a musician, a so, musical, uh, yeah, songwriter. Yeah, phenomenal songwriter. Wow. And, singer. and I've worked with other musicians as well, composers. Did, did, do you know if Kyle continued to do it? I don't know if he did. I did not. My problem is I didn't. I just love working with people. I did not do good follow up with him. I'm sure he did it for, through the season. Right. But you know, I mean, the second half was better. Looking for new things, it was better. Yeah. But athletes are always looking for new things. All right, let's switch to uh, the business. Well, wait, no. I want to finish one thing, and then we'll talk about business. Okay. How this, how, how this can impact business and make money. Um, anticipation. Yeah. Gretzky. Yep. I'm the I'm I'm great because I see where the puck's going. Right. How, you're saying that the exercise I just did helps me with and helps helps my brain yeah. begin to anticipate. Yes, that's the intuition. Doesn't that take you quote unquote to... out of the moment? <clears throat> Actually, no, because you're fully in the moment. You're just anticipating something coming. Right. So remember when we did the fruit of the right. So there's one of the variations where you had your brain actually had to do a calculation, had to translate from the color to something else. Mm. So your brain. Looks yeah, there was ahead. an exercise where you had me uh, instead of just giving directions, I would start saying right, left, green, blue. Yeah, different, different, different pattern. And you made my brain switch instead of just saying direction. You said, "Hey, give direction and color." And we have harder variations of this. We didn't yeah. get to where you do things on the color. So you have really, because the colors are more random than the columns. Right. So it really improves your anticipation. You've got to be really on top of things when you do that. But let's talk about for one more second about being in the moment. So I understand being okay. in the moment as I'm in a flow state in a way. I'm very present with what I'm doing. So I'm in a podcast right now. I'm present with you and I'm not thinking about the pizza I want to have tonight. <laughs> right? Sounds good. Yeah, yeah Right. Um, so that is, is technically being in the moment, right? That I'm just so yeah. engrossed with yeah. my conversation with you and with John or whatever, this room, this pocket, that's being in the moment. And you're saying, Amr, you could also anticipate what I might, I, John might say after you're done speaking or something like that in this podcast. You, you, you Well, the you, anticipation is really just a split second, but it relieves your anxiety, how often do we get anxious or worried because we're not sure what's coming, right? When you have that little bit of a, a, a buffer, that's why it, where it's so helpful for people with post-traumatic stress disorder, right? So what happens is a trigger goes off and they react. They don't have control over that. When you yeah, have, a guy it, who's been in Afghanistan comes here and a muffler blows yeah, and he might exactly. be triggered. But the guys I've worked with after the train, they say they, they know something's coming and they're prepared for it. Oh, really? You know, the PTSD guys yeah, because, know something's coming. They kind of yeah. know the muffler thing is going to come in a way. They don't, they don't, but their brain's primed for it. Huh. So it's like they know it's going to come, and when it does come, they, they can do something different, a different uh, I, he, My wife, who is a wonderful, wonderful woman, has been helping me lately. She's like, Amr, I think when the weekend comes around, my, my, so my, let me tell you a little background. My, in general, I struggle with depression. Okay. And what helps me quite a bit is to really focus on work. Yeah. Um, and, and also just have a balanced life. But, but I do other things as well. Exercise regularly. Um, try and eat well. But she's like, hey, when the weekend comes around, it seems, Amr, like you kind of start going yeah. south. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, no. For the first, like, year, I'm like, you're crazy. Yeah. You know, stop, stop calling me depressed. Like, you know. And then after a while, I'm like, mm, she's right. Yeah. She's right. I, I am not happy on the weekend. I'm dragging. I, I kind of have to peel myself out of bed. Um, and I'm not excited to be around my family as much as I would like to be. And I'm like, yeah, I think I'm just using work as an escape from probably something heavy on me. Yeah. So I guess my question to you is, that's not quite P PTSD, but there's something traumatic going on. Well, my, my father, I will say this. In general, I struggle with that. My father did pass away earlier this year, mm, back in January. May he rest hard. in peace. Yeah. And I wonder if like... The work distracts me during the week from my father's, the loss of my yeah. father. And then the weekend hits and it's like, that's kind of weighing on my heart. Um, do you, would, would this impact depression in any way? No, I'm not a psychologist, right? So that, you know, talk about the psychology of it. But I've worked with some severe de depressed people. And what I would encourage you to do when you feel that way is to do some of these ones and the patterns. Because this one guy I work with. Um, I can tell you, today's Friday. Yeah, you're going to be depressed I, tomorrow. It's Yeah, it's... it's yeah. I, it hasn't so start in. your day with it. Well, I felt it this morning starting to kick in, but then I tried to do something with my kids and just try and yeah. get out of it a little bit. 
And you're saying, yeah, tonight is going to really start kicking in. So I might start it tonight or tomorrow and just experiment. Well, I, and other things have a great weekend. I told you the weekend star, my favorite weekend star, right? This the financial analyst who hired oh, right. me because he's so overwhelmed at work, right? Financial so analyst, I, super I, overwhelmed I, at work. Did I, my first session with him on a Friday. He emailed me Monday morning before he got to work and said, John, I did your exercises. Saturday Hooked up with morning. tons of women That's Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> no, he made his. So basically, he said, I got more done around the house by noon than normally would all weekend. So ah. obviously, he's feeling good. He's getting stuff done. He's, right. he's more efficient. He said, and My wife told me that now when she talks to me, she notices I'm focused on her because his focus is better. He said, You already made my home life awesome. I can't wait to get to work. So it impacts the So, memory. and the depressed guy, what happens every time you do a slightly harder variation, you know, it's a slight dopamine release, which actually counteracts depression. So when you get depressed. Oh, is that right? right? Oh, yeah. You're saying by me doing this, yeah. it was a little bit of a dopamine hit? Yep. And dopamine is the happy hormone, right? The happy right? drug. So, so what happens is, you know, when you're depressed, right? So you're already, like, you're, let's just say, for example, you're dreading going home because you don't have to get to work. You get up in the morning. Maybe you're dragging a little bit in the morning, Right. You continue down that downward path totally. unless something's going to stick you back up. Yeah, unless I act upon that energy totally. You do a couple of these, you start feeling better. Hey, man, that was a hard. I'll give you some. You make them sound like oxycontin. <laughs> do a couple of these. A safe oxycontin. The safe right? version, right? And so when you do a harder one, that I sent you some variations to that are going to be harder. You do harder. You feel really good. Like didn't you feel good today when every time we totally. made it a little bit harder, and we finished with something so much harder than you could have started with, right? That's true. And every time you feel good because That's you're. Right. I walked something. out, I was hugging and my kid, I gave them all kisses and they're like, what the hell's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know. Life is great, isn't it? I got to go to work. How old are your kids? Three and one. Oh, uh, they're a little young. I was say you can do this with your kids too. I mean, shoot, if your yeah. daughter is at, what, 12 seconds you said? She's 17 now, so she started when she was uh, about uh, five. Five years old? Yeah. And she's at 12 seconds now? Yeah, that's 12 seconds. No, wait. It, it, okay, wait. I'm probably going into too many directions. Um, so the anticipation function you're saying is split second and it does, you're still in the moment and it helps from a PTSD perspective because you're anticipating in a healthy way. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm, I'm always looking for patterns as we're doing but comedy I, stuff. But sports or even, you know, improv for sure. Improv, improv is all about patterns, right? So we're looking for um, things that are common in events. Yeah. Uh, and you're also looking for callbacks. Well, and that was the second part we worked on was pattern recognition. Remember, we did the pattern. Direction, color, direction, color. Direction, color, That's direction, pattern color. pattern recognition. You're right. Pattern recognition impacts almost everything we do. Totally. Helps us with our memory, helps us with our reactions, helps us with our relationships. Relationships, yeah. yeah I see huge. that. Yeah, I do. The, the depression, I see this every weekend. Yeah. I'm seeing a pattern. All right, and then so let's go back. Any other parts of the brain? Does this help memory? Does this help well, yes. any other parts? Well, Executive so, function is decision making. Well, working memory was a third part we worked on, right? Holding something in short term memory and executing on it. Now, one of the things that happens is if you continue to do this, memory improves significantly. We've done some work at some senior homes, and um, you know, and they really. This like dude it. continues to experiment with every single Everybody. human being. Everybody with a brain. So far, um, we've experimented. I mean, people say, you know, can it help? So and so, I'm working with you. Uh, 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 Can it help me in bed? Uh, yeah, up, down, left, right. <laughs> <laughs> I need to focus. My wife's depending on it. <laughs> yeah, I'll help you with your focus, right? It will, right? Yeah, absolutely. Boom. Well, just you, don't experiment like in the moment with them. You man. remember Nick Roach played for the Bears uh, yeah. five years ago? So I worked with him. He oh, said nice. he could lift more weights. When he was lifting, because he was more focused, it, yeah, there's a the mental hand, strength, brain right. connection wow. is faster. Wow! So it impacts everything we do is impacted by our brain. Amazing. All right, let's let's jump to business. Okay. Uh, have you done this? Have you worked on this? You said with traders. Yeah, traders. So yeah. traders definitely will lose five hundred grand or million bucks. Or I mean, those are bigger J.P. Morgan type of trades, but maybe even smaller guys. Oh man, I lost ten grand today, twenty yeah. grand, yeah. or in the day. You know, traders start early, 7 a.m., 8 a.m. It could be 9 a.m. and they still have eight more hours or whatever, yeah. six more hours of yeah. trading. Yeah. That would suck if they have a big loss at 8 or 9 a.m. early in the day. That could possibly create a bigger hole for them because right. their mindset is not and, in the right place. And, that, and that's where this helps, right? Because it gets rid of the revenge trading, right? So one of the ways we train with the speed You said goal, it gets you into revenge it trading? It gets, gets rid of re revenge, you know, yeah. revenge trading, right? Well, you're trying you know, to get back at the market. Trying to get back in the markets, right? Uh, yeah, what was that movie where the guy brought down the bank? Um, oh, there's Wolf of Wall Street yeah. brought down the bank. Oh, well, uh, there's uh, uh, the other one, uh, the, yeah. the Big Short. I don't remember what it was, but basically that's someone you're who brought trying to make bank. up your losses, right? So, yes. so and that's a, that's an emotional thing. It's not a mental. It's not a, a smart thing to do, 
right? You got to stay with your strategy. You got to stay focused and you got to let mistakes go, go by the wayside. That's why we, do you kept this. stressing that with me. You said, Amr, if you make a mistake, keep going, keep going, keep going. That's right. It was hard for me. And I kept laughing at myself and you're like, no, just keep going, keep going. And the more you do that, the more you'll be able to do that. But at the same time, your attention will pick up. So you'll be aware of why you made the mistake and you'll be, you'll un- unconsciously start to figure out why it doesn't happen the next time, but you're not going to lose your momentum. You're going to wow. just keep going. Wow. Powerful. Okay, so uh, so business. So how? Yeah. So I got the traders part. Okay. You're you're basically saying um, uh, if a trader get, gets a little bit of a takes a hit, yeah, and he jumps into taking a short five minute break or ten minute break and does some brain training that you've taught him, uh, it will help him refocus, right, and right. improve his decision making. Thereafter, he can jump back in the seat and possibly trade with the same strategy he may have proposed at the beginning of the day, for example. Right, right. And so, and so obviously not worrying about that revenge anymore. So, and the stress, will, the stress goes away. The, the cool thing about this is there's a lot of good programs for stress like meditation and mindfulness and so forth, but they kind of, you have to think about them. This really is stress because your brain is more efficient. Totally. So the, the things that might have been stressing you out before are gone and you're just processing faster. Why is that? It's because it's faster. You're making decisions faster. Typically, you, uh, we, it's, almost like, uh, it's almost like you're deciding... You're making the choice to stop being emotional. You are, you're but you're actually diff- not even thinking about it. It's just happening. You're unconsciously choosing a new emotion. Yeah, yeah. So we didn't get into it today. There's a whole framework of, of underlying mental processes that I don't talk about because I want to keep it as simple as possible. Right, right, right. right. But we all have a makeup of these, and they all pretty much develop when we're younger, and this actually shapes our personality. And so what happens is we have stronger ones and weaker ones. And our stronger ones will compensate for weaker ones until they get overloaded. Wait, wait, I'm not following. Stronger what versus weaker what? Stronger mental processes Uh will compensate for weaker ones. Makes sense. If if if, if, If one arm is weaker than the other or one leg is stronger than the other, it'll compensate for the other side. Right, it'll compensate. And either either when we get overloaded, our stronger ones will either get agitated and frustrated or will withdraw. Right. So a perfect example, a friend of mine, um, when he was manager at an IT organization, we talked through this. You might have, you know, typically an IT organization, the smartest guy is sitting in the back room because he's not very good socially, right? Really good at, his, at, his, at the technical stuff. Often that's because when they were younger, there's a, a skill called synthesis, which is the ability to pull disparate bits of information together to be acted upon. If you're weak at that, it means in a social situation, you're not going to say the right word. And you're going to be a little bit, like you could be yeah. way ahead of everybody else mentally, but getting the work. So what do you do? You kind of withdraw. Yeah. And so we go to our comfort zone and you're sitting in the back room where you're comfortable, right? Doing all these great things, but it'd be much better for the company if he was out in front of people. When you go through this training and you improve synthesis, all of a sudden he's the life of the party. He's talking faster. He's thinking better. He's anticipating. So now He's an extrovert as opposed to an introvert, introvert, and all we've done is really just improve his hmm. mental processing. What do you think of that, John Dolder? So that synthesis just kind of, it's, it'll help me like keep, not pause as much or... Like yeah. you're doing yeah. right now? Yeah, like right now. <laughs> like yeah, right. I do all right. the time. Yes, so. yes. Yeah, because I'm more of an introvert, so I was, I'm just thinking these. There we go. There's, there's exhibit yeah. A right here. Oh, perfectly. It's this would help for sure. Yeah, for sure. So I was thinking about that 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 would help because in, in the mornings my my brain doesn't really process things that fast. So like if I did that when I woke up in the morning, yep. it would it would in be the morning. A, more of a jump start to my day. Let's yeah, say let's absolutely. say John money. Let's say, how would okay. We'll get to the business question a little more. I want to understand other business opportunity, other ways it might work in business and investing. But if John or someone else wanted to work with you, yeah, uh, from a time and money perspective, what are your like you know posted rates, posted time suggestions, so on. So, and so typically, forth. what I do is I, I work through most people via Zoom. It's very easy to schedule. There's no travel time, and I can customize it. Per person, so for one to four people, it's three twenty-five per session, and I discount five sessions, which is kind of a basic program, to fifteen hundred bucks. Okay. One of the reasons I do that is, you know, the, you'll get the benefits way beyond that. But I encourage people to do it with someone else, so that way, if you got two people or three people, you split the money. It's not that much. One to four, you said. One to four. So if right. you got four people, each guy drops uh, 80 or 90 bucks. Yeah, exactly. Split it up per session. Plus you get homework and you keep practicing and you get the exercises. 
the cool thing when you do it with someone else is it also improves relationships, improves um, um, uh, bonding, situational awareness, bonding. You start to anticipate how other people are talking. Really important for people who are in any kind of relationship type field, like salespeople, customer service people, Absolutely. and so forth. If it would, could all four people be in separate locations while they do this with you? They can. It's difficult. I've done that before. It's much better if you're in the same. Got it. Them, but if you you can, but with Zoom, there's always a lag. All right. It, yeah, right, right. And that's part of the problem. Listeners, if you all want to do this with me, hit me up on Instagram or wherever, and uh, and I'll jump on and do this with with, four, with three other people. Yeah. Um, all right. So then, uh, and then would five, se- let's say we did 1500 bucks. would five sessions be, do you feel like that would get people on the right track oh, for a absolutely. longer period of time? Uh, oh, yeah. So so each one is harder, right? So you got the kind of the basic one today. Each one builds on that, and you also learn new ways to practice it and apply it to your life. And that, that's the first five. <clears throat> now, we have a second set that uses a completely different exercise. It's actually a puzzle. We always do the arrow. So there's a harder variation of this that we do that's got numbers in it, and great for traders, right? Numbers. The other exercise is five plastic pieces in a This is starting card. to feel like the Matrix a little bit. The Matrix, Especially yeah. when you brought up numbers. Yeah. Because, I mean, I'm st- that's what my eyes are doing as I'm looking at this page is like it's scanning, it's perceiving, it's trying to anticipate, it's focusing. Yeah. It's yeah. looking for patterns, it's grouping. I started seeing two or three arrows at once. I'm like, that's oh, right go, up left. Exactly. And when you start doing that, you're training your brain to, to take larger chunks of information at the same Neo, time. Neo, baby. exactly what we want. Totally <laughs> Neo. <laughs> Neo. Okay, so, uh, I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, it's uh, okay. Uh, so the second one, just ha- we had a different exercise. It gets harder, yeah. It's very cool, though. It, it's actually more tan- um, tangible than, than a piece of paper. So it's, it's a puzzle. A and physical go- puzzle. Wait, it's a physical you- puzzle. Okay. And the goal is to put the pieces together to look like one of the cards. There's lots of games out there like that, Right. Typically, though, we always tackle problems through trial and error. We always tackle so problems it, through trial and that's error. How we, that's how we kind of wire. In life, we just figure, we, that, in life. Yeah, we figure so, shit out. So it could take anywhere from five to ten minutes to do the first one. We train, you a pro, train your brain to use a process to break it down, think it through, and execute that applies to anything. But we do with this so that eventually you can do any puzzle in the deck in ten seconds or less. Woo. And then we have you do it with someone else. So huge for salespeople, right? Customer service people, for executives who have to make decisions and communicate them effectively to their teams. So when you do it that way, it forces you to solve the puzzle, think through the exact specific process that you need to solve it, communicate that in a way that the other person will understand it, and then have that happen, have the other person put it together. And that applies to anything. It applies to sales meetings. Well, and what was the what was the brain uh, three step process? To how the brain operates? You said? break it down, break it down, think it through, think it through, and execute, and then execute. Meaning, make a decision. Yeah, break it, it down, think it through, execute. because data is always coming at us. right? Tons. Our ability to break it into tons of stimulus, especially today, tons of stimulus. Filter out what's not important. Think through what we want to do with that relevant information, and then execute on it. We call that actually. We talked about synthesis before. There's actually a term we coined actually called crinosynthesis. Crino? Crino. C-R- K-R-I-N-O, K-R-I-N-O, which means critical. Critical. So we want the brain only pulling up the most critical pieces of information, right. synthesizing them and executing on that. It's much more efficient. Right. And that's what we're training the brain to do. Woo. Amazing. All right. So let's get into other business environments besides okay. trading because not yeah. everyone listens to this trader. Any other uh, experiences you have with um, people who who uh, invest or buy real estate or buy other uh, yeah one business. of my one of my favorite clients uh, is down in Austin Texas um, he's a big uh, commercial real estate investor commercial real estate um, investor okay. his goal is to become the first person under forty to be worth a billion dollars in a non technical field okay he's not he's not forty yet he's not forty yet and commercial real estate is obviously not technical so he's trying to become a billionaire before forty how old is this guy uh he's probably i think he's thirty seven wow today. and so phenomenal guy his goal his personal goal is to be a billionaire before forty yeah okay got it and so God and bless he's this guy. one of those Damn. guys who's always trying to improve himself every possible physical workout any of that kind of things and so the brain training was a natural for him mm. and so how do he, he find you <clears throat> He found me through his, uh, how do you find me? Uh, I think a friend of mine referred him to me mm-hmm. um, because he was always look, reaching out for new ways to do things. Mm. And, um, but what he says now in, and where it's helping him, now we don't have a, a specific money 
factor that the brain training is helping. But he says he can do a deal that used to take him a week. He can do in a day now. Wow. So meaning he can, meaning do, he can decide He can if put he wants the whole thing together and, and sell it in a day where it used to take him a week. Wow. What that means is not only or, more... Or buy you know, it. He's a commercial Or buy it, yeah. yeah. And develop it. All the development, the plans and everything. So, Holy smokes. So not only is he doing more deals per week, but he's doing them in less time. So he has more time with his family. Right. Right? And he's less stressed. Um, so that those are is the kind amazing. Of things that can happen. I also heard you say earlier uh, something about this is a learning accelerator. What did you mean by that? Learning accelerator. So, if I do this, this will accelerate my ability to learn. Yes, if you run through these drills before you study, ah. you'll learn uh, fast, remember better. One of my, you know, I got tons of stories. Right, one of my favorite ones was an inner city school here in Chicago. You do have tons of stories because you work with everyone. With all these people. I don't know how you do it. And, uh, Are there like six of you? Uh, I wish. No, no. I, I, well, although we did Feels create like a certification yeah. program, so now we can certify other people. Oh, nice. But this high school, inner city high school, inner city kids, post-traumatic stress disorder, they were really struggling. A friend of mine was the advisor. Um, he said, you know, can you help the class? So because we wanted to make an experiment, instead of me doing the training, I taught him how to do the basic exercises Three times a week, 15 minutes each time max, right? Over the course of eight weeks, their ACT scores went up three full points. Wow. They were from the lowest to the highest in the school. Grades went up and behavioral issues went down. Wow. So when you stimulate the brain with Three this, times a week, 15 minutes. That's all. That's it. 45 minutes a week over eight weeks. Wow. Um, the brain, it's, there's something, again, I don't like to throw out you know, technical terms, but there's something called long-term potentiation. And that's the ability of the brain. It opens a window where data that's coming in will be assimilated faster and stored longer. And that's what we stimulate when we do this. Mm. That in addition to what I talked to you about earlier, the postsynaptic receptors. So again, long technical term. Postsynaptic receptors. It's basically the buckets where the neurotransmitters are collected. Yep, so I'm picturing, I studied a bunch of neuroscience when I was oh, you in did? college. Okay. Okay. And I'm, I'm picturing uh, 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 the neuron. Yep. Right, firing in some way, and then yep. and then almost like it's firing a basketball, and then yep. a net that receives it, and it, it goes through the net. Exactly. And so if you have 100 buckets, 100 nets, and you throw 500 basketballs at it, you'll catch 100. Yep. But if you have 200 buckets or 200 baskets... Double the nets. You double the number. So you're, you're increasing... Oh, this, this, this training is increasing the number does. of nets? Oh, it, yeah, oh, incredibly fast. The, those changes solidify in as little as 20 minutes. So yeah, that I felt it after... Our, learning, you feel it, right? Wow. So that's okay, so, so let's say we worked with you for the five sessions. Okay. Would you probably recommend like once a week for the five weeks? Typically once a week. I just worked with a trader, by the way. Um, we did twice a week. He wanted twice to do six week. sessions. We did twice a week. Okay. Um, and so he did it for three weeks. And we did it for three weeks. So yep. let's say we did once a week for five weeks. What homework would you give us for the six days after What that? I would do is give you a, to practice what we did during the session. Got it. So, so my, my goal session. is to work your brain as hard as I possibly can. Right. At the same time, expose you to new ways to do it. So then you practice that during the week. And then, and I always encourage you to do it before you're trading or do it before you're studying or, you know, make it part of your life, right. part of your regular routine instead of trying to remember it. Right. One thing I tell people is just tape this exercise on front of your computer screen. So the first thing you do when you sit down is you run through it, then you flip it over the back. And then when you get up, you flip it back. So every time you sit ah, down, tape it. I yeah, see. You, it's reminding you, right? Yeah, you see it right on your computer all the time. Um, uh, and then, so let's say we did the five weeks. Okay. And you say, all right, I want you guys to practice for the next week until our next session. Would you recommend every day for at least 20 minutes or something? What's your recommendation? I would recommend 15 minutes or so every other day of the hard patterns, uh -huh. but that speed drill as many times during the day as you can. Oh, so, and actually, after the second session, we actually, we just created a new exercise last year. We call it the five-step neuroprimer. Mm -hmm. And that's the one you'll do every morning after the second session. It basically takes what you just did and puts it on steroids. It mm. makes it incredibly difficult within about five minutes. And so your brain is working really, really hard in all the ways it needs to in five minutes. Mm. And okay, so, but if somebody said to you, just, John, give me a schedule for these next six days until we see you again, okay. what would you say after week one? I want you to definitely do every other day the pattern. The longer pattern. The longer right. pattern one. And then every day I want you to do the speed test. Yeah. Would you say, what would you recommend? Well, in the morning first. In the morning? And then invest 20 minutes. Well, how long does it take? It's a minute. Oh, That's one minute. you did for a minute. The speed, the speed test. Video. Okay. And then 
depending on what your profession is, right? So if you're a trader, do it before you trade. If it's, you know, your school teacher, do it before you get to class. So maybe, let's say, you know, two to three to four, somewhere between one and five times a day. Yeah, yeah. Whenever, whenever you need, it's more of an as-needed thing. And it's thing. a one-minute thing. And attach it to your regular schedule. Got it. Before you come home, if it's stressful to come home. Some guys, it's stressful to come home. Totally. Before you come home, right? Um, totally. I, I feel that sometimes And then the other thing I, I encourage people to do, the patterns, is put something on in the background. So if you, and so the pro athletes, if they're watching like a hockey game, do them during the commercials and, and leave the commercials on loud. So you have to tune them out while you're doing the exercises. And it makes your, your, your muscle building even stronger, your mental strength. That's funny. So when we were doing this exercise, John, I had notifications popping up on my computer. Yeah. None were going off at all in the first 15, 20 minutes of the exercise. Then we get to one of the hardest ones <laughs> and I'm halfway through. I'm kicking ass. I'm halfway through and bing, I could see the green text message thing pop up on my Mac. Okay. And I'm like, ignore, ignore, ding, Reddit. This is what's trending on Reddit. I'm like, damn, I want to know what's trending on Reddit right now. <laughs> but I kept going through it, yeah. and I kept hearing a voice saying like, you know, like, come look at me. I'm a text message you need to read. And I'm like, no, ignore that, no, ignore that. And so suddenly my focus and my flow were much harder. I did push through, but it felt like I was walking through sludge. Yeah, yeah. And so you're saying... Hey, those notifications are actually kind of good in a they way. They are good. Because they're going to make you actually even stronger as time goes on. Right. Because distractions are going to come up when you're on stage or working in your restaurant or whatever you're doing. Uh, those distractions are necessarily going to be there. The brain has to figure out and filter through synthesis, yeah. I guess, what's yeah. the most important thing. Right, right. And actually, that wasn't synthesis. I'm sorry. That The filtration process was something else you called it. I forgot. Well, part of it is, well, analysis, synthesis, categorization and classification is that. Okay. So you want to categorize it and classify it, what's important, what's not important. Critical, yeah. That's why, you know, the, everybody talks about multitasking. Crino. Crino. The Crino synthesis to pull yeah. up what's important. Pull up what's important. Multitasking. And is notification at that time was not important. Right, Exactly. Now, multitasking is a myth, right? All these kids who think they're multitasking or trade. See, I kind of feel like... They can't. Right, you're saying you can't. You're saying but, what you can do is zone that thing out. But you can also multi-switch. So when your brain... It's like a computer, right? Your computer can only do one thing at a time. I can flip really between fast. tabs, right. Just flip back and forth really fast. That's what we can help you do. So multi-switch. One thing about business I'm going to say is, so that's like the individual people I work with. For businesses, we have whole programs mm. to work with teams. Like the executive team at the yeah. Hub Insurance or whatever? Hub teams, sales teams, traders, teams of traders. And any, you know, company wants to invest in their teams. And the teams are kind of cool because we, we do the live stuff, but then we also reinforce it with, you know, with emails and mm. mastermind groups and so forth. So nice. we, we try to minimize the, the amount of time away from employee what they're doing but at the same time when you do it as a group um, we actually started taking surveys so I've been speaking at some conferences afterwards and I asked them you know the, the five components of emotional intelligence right everybody's about emotional intelligence so it's awareness you know for self forgiveness confidence and so forth did you not experience any of those and they say no because when you do this in a group M meaning 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 that meaning they all they experience all five of them they experience self-forgiveness. They experience yes. confidence. Because so, when you do this in a group, like... So their emotional intelligence went up. Oh, huge. Because what happens is, like you notice, you make a mistake, right? You start laughing. And when you're making mistakes and it's okay, it's okay if he makes a mistake. And we can laugh at him because there's some safety. together right. at our mistakes. Because when I do a group, everybody laughs. Hmm. And so there's a, there's kind of a camaraderie that builds right, as well, and right. that makes things really efficient. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Where can people learn more about combat brain training? Probably the best way is the combat brain training website, which is under it's 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 there. It's got it needs a major upgrade, which we're working on. But there's a contact us form there. Perfect. Um, or they can and, just go. And it, what is the website? Um, CombatBrainTraining.com. Perfect. Don't forget the brain. Some people say combat <laughs> training. I don't train combat. You know, that's a different website. Brain training, different website. You sign up there, you can be kicking some ass. Yeah, be shooting some people. So. <laughs> but they can also just send me an email, John at combatbraintraining.com. Perfect. Make sure though, if you guys, if you fill out the contact form, don't just put your email there because I get lots of spam there. Actually, mm. ask a question or say I heard about you on our show. Perfect. You know, let me know Makes who sense. you are so I can give you the information that you want. Makes sense. And then, um. Uh, can they download this? Like, do you have this anywhere out there in the world? They don't because they wouldn't know what to do with it. It's, it's like, it's yeah, like, what's like weights to the gym, right? They're just sitting dumbbells. Now, you have a right. good trainer, you can get stronger. Different story, right, right, right. But right, right, right. they're just sitting there. 
Got it. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right, John of Combat Training. Uh, CombatBrainTraining.com. Cool. Well, <laughs> man, that was That's a kick-ass fun. couple of hours. Yeah. It's been fun. John Kennedy. We did it, baby. Yeah, you guys are great. Um, thank you for coming on the show, man. Absolutely. Yeah, I appreciate it. And um, any spe- uh, anything else you'd like to plug? Any speaker things you have coming up in Illinois? Um, not yet. Mo- most of the next ones coming up are in Canada. Okay. Do like counting up Canadians in, in Toronto. Like you. They love Toronto. Okay. Um, Winnipeg doing some project managers. Actually, uh, if they're project managers, I'll be doing. Uh, you know what's funny? I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I look at my podcast results and who where who's listening where. Yeah. And I think 5% of the listeners are in Canada because really? I used to live there. I have friends who probably are, oh, are cool. passing it around. So where will you be speaking in Toronto I'll and when? In Toronto at the uh, PM uh, Business Analyst World Conference. PM um, Business Analyst. And if they if they send World me an email, I have it all in my signature. Got so it. I'll know. In what? Chicago, it'll be the same conference in Chicago in December. December, okay. And then uh, in November, I'll be speaking at a Project Management Institute conference as well. Awesome. John, thank you very much for coming. Absolutely. Dolder? Yes. Thank you for kicking some ass. Always a pleasure. (laughs) We out, y'all. Peace. Peace.